Hello everybody. On this day of Holy Week, we are celebrating a day that's most popularly known as Monday Thursday. And during this day, we commemorate several significant events that had happened in Jesus' life. One of these events was when Jesus went into the upper room and washed his disciples' feet. By doing this humble display of love, he showed them the importance and significance of loving each other self-sacrificially, but he also showed us the importance of keeping ourselves clean and pure from the sins that collect through everyday life. Something else that Jesus had done was the Last Supper. Um, for one final meal uh, before he suffered the cross, Jesus spent some time with his disciples talking about what was about to happen and uh, solidifying them in their faith to be able to handle things that were about to come. Another big event that had happened was when Jesus and his disciples went to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. And I'd like to take a few minutes to talk about why this was so important and how can apply to our lives and why it's important for us as well. We read about this in Mark chapter 14, and we're going to be starting in verse 32. And it says, They went to the olive grove called Gethsemane, and Jesus said, Sit here while I go and pray. He took Peter, James, and John with him, and became deeply troubled and distressed. He told them, My soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. He went on a little farther and fell to the ground. He prayed that, if it were possible, the awful hour awaiting him might pass him by. Abba, Father, he cried, everything is possible to you. Please take the suffering from me. But I want your will to be done, not mine. Then he returned and found the disciples asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Couldn't you watch with me even one hour? Keep watch and pray, so that you will not give in to temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. What I want you to see out of these verses starts in verse 36. I want you to notice how Jesus approaches God. He says, Abba, Father. This is significant because the term Abba is an endearing term for Father which reflects the fact that Jesus believed that God loved him. But he believed that God loved him even in reflection of the suffering he was about to face. So we continue to read, and it says that he cried out, everything is possible for you. So he believed that God loved him, and he believed that if it was in God's will, at any point he could change his destiny. He could change the fact that he was going to have to suffer on the cross. And I think that that's a significant thing for us to realize, especially in correlation to the following words. He goes on and he says, please take this cup away from me. So he believed that God loved him. He believed that God was able to, at any point, change the, the fact that he was going to have to suffer. And he also desired in himself to not have to face the suffering. But then we go on and we read that it says, Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. So Jesus recognized and realized that God might have a plan and a purpose for the suffering he was about to face. And in reality, Jesus knew that God had a plan and a purpose for it. And knowing that plan and knowing that purpose, he loved the Father's will for his life the Father's will for even his suffering, more than his own will to, to live and to thrive. And so what can we gather out of this for our own lives? Well, first thing that I want us to realize and understand is that like Jesus, we are going to have to face suffering in this world. Jesus had to face suffering as a human, and we know that we will have to face suffering as humans as well. In John chapter 16, verse 33, we read, I have told you this so that you may be, have peace in me. Here on earth you will ha have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. So we see here that Jesus, he's telling us that we will have suffering in this world. 
But then he went on and he said, but take heart because I have overcome the world. How did Jesus overcome the world? He overcame the world when he was willing to submit his will and his desire for life in the moment to his love for God's purposes in his life, for God's purposes for him on the cross even. And so for us, we can have victory in our moments of suffering, in our moments of agony, when we are willing to submit our desire to get past those moments to his purpose for our lives in the midst of the suffering we face. And this is extremely important for us to understand, particularly in light of the suffering that many of us are facing right now and the suffering we may have to face in the next several months, the next upcoming months. We have to remember that in spite of what we suffer, that God still does love us, just as Jesus recognized in his moment of suffering that God loved him. So we need to ask ourselves this question. Do we love God's purposes for our lives and his purposes for even our suffering more than our desire for our own lives? And so that's what I want you to remember. And I want you to challenge yourselves throughout this time and throughout this Easter to ask yourselves that question. Do I love him and do I love his purposes even in the midst of my suffering? Thank you, and I want you guys to know that I am praying for you throughout this Easter, and um, I love you guys, and stay healthy, stay strong, but stay submitted to the will of God for your lives. They are